Now for the GLD prospectus. Let's have a closer look at the prospectus of the GLD ETF to examine if GLD as an investment vehicle really is as good as holding physical gold itself. GLD is a legal trust designed to track the price of gold. The sponsor of GLD is the World Gold Council, the trustee of GLD is the Bank of New York and the custodian of GLD is HSBC. GLD is a derivative because it is a piece of paper that is supposed to move with or is derived from the movement of the underlying asset which is gold. Let's begin with the obvious critic to GLD. Is it not a huge conflict of interest that HSBC, a bank that perpetually ranks among the largest short positioners against gold on the COMEX, is the custodian for GLD? If you have positioned yourself to make huge profits from drops in the price of gold, is it reasonable for you to simultaneously desire investors to buy more physical gold and drive the price of gold up? On the surface, it certainly appears to be another classic case of the fox guarding the hen house. Now let's have a look at the clauses in the GLD prospectus. I quote, neither the Securities and Exchange Commission nor any state securities commissions have approved or disapproved of the securities offered in this prospectus or determined if this prospectus is truthful or complete, unquote. So what this says is that nobody has checked the legitimacy of what the GLD issuers are telling you in this prospectus. You just have to trust them. So basically nothing in reality has to be the way stated in this prospectus. So how could you trust what is written in the prospectus when it has not been verified by for validity by anyone? Then the second point I would like to make has to do with losses of the gold that is supposedly held by GLD. I quote, the trust's gold may be subject to loss, damage, theft or restrictions on access, the lack of adequate resources to recovery if the trust's gold is lost, damaged, stolen or destroyed, including a lack of insurance. So when they claim they had gold in the vaults that once was there, and nobody could check and has now been lost you have no way to get to your gold they mention the word lost next to stolen so apparently they don't even need to prove the gold was stolen they just claim it was lost and there's no way you can get access to the gold your GLD shares hold a claim to the biggest problem with GLD is that there is no way to legally force the trustee or custodian to prove that the gold being kept by the custodian is in the custodian's vault. The custodian has the ability to use sub-custodians to safe keep the gold, and the sub-custodians are permitted to use their own sub-custodians to safe keep their gold. The trustee slash custodian slash sub-custodian relationship is where the validity of the GLD this integrates into a maze of legal barriers which ultimately prevent anyone from physically verifying that the GLD trust holds anything more than promises of gold. Then there is another problem. Gold GLD shares hold a claim to may be held in the form of unallocated accounts. In my opinion there are several potential huge problems with this arrangement. As we have seen earlier there is a potential for problems holding a claim to unallocated gold. Physical gold held by the GLD should be held in allocated accounts specifically for the trust. The fact that physical gold GLD shares hold a claim to may be held in unallocated gold accounts where gold is not segregated from the custodian's asset may mean that multiple entities have claims to the same gold bars. In theory, the gold held in the custodian vaults may be used for delivery against shorts. And we have seen earlier that this is a huge problem. Then there is a very interesting um, clause in the prospect and that, that is that most investors won't have the right to take physical delivery. 
unless a shareholder owns at least 100,000 shares, each worth over $100, a GLD shareholder can never take physical possession of any GLD gold its shares hold a claim to. And another thing to consider when investing in GLD is when the custodian that is storing the gold in its vault is declared bankrupt, there's only a very small chance you will be able to access the gold because the gold in the custodian's vault is the property of the custodian. And it's also good to notice that a gold deposit described in the prospectus is not the same as the term gold that is also being used in the prospectus. Gold is a physical metal stored or built in a secure vault and a gold deposit is a liability of a financial institution. The former is a tangible asset, the latter is a financial asset, just paper gold. And when GLD claims only gold deposits, all GLD has to do to satisfy its auditor is to show them the bank statement, which is a piece of paper, that says gold is stored in any sub-custodian appointed to the custodian. The auditors do not have to go to the vault of the sub-custodian to prove that the gold actually exists. And the last thing I would like to point out, and you can see the overview of the points I made on this sheet, is that gold bars held by GLD may not meet London good delivery standards. I personally don't think you would be happy when it turns out that the gold they hold for you is just 18 carat instead of the 24 carat that would be usual. Though the evidence against investing in GLD that presented here is circumstantial, plenty of red flags exist in the GLD prospectus that should steer any logical, rational human being that wishes to own gold and silver away from this investment vehicle. Then the fourth reason to be skeptical about GLD is that only half of its holdings are ever audited. The GLD prospectus only claims audits to the custodian's GLD holdings. These holdings are highlighted in yellow on this slide. If audited, only half of HSBC's holdings are audited. When conducting an audit, auditors will only ask themselves, does HSBC have the 100 ounces of gold backing up the 100 ETFs HSBC owes to ETF buyers? The two holdings depicted over here on this slide have never been simultaneously been audited. All that has ever been established is that the bullion banks have enough gold to cover either their short positions or the custodian's agreements. And if these bankers had to choose between defaulting on their own short positions, which would permanently discredit them in commodity markets, or defaulting on their custodian's agreements and pay just a small fine, which course of actions would these bankers be most likely to take, you think? The fifth reason to be skeptical about gold ETFs is that COMEX allows futures contracts to be settled with ETFs. A futures market is supposed to provide price discovery for a commodity. In the gold market this notion has been hijacked because settlement can be made with a derivative instrument such as an unbacked or partially backed ETF share. If that derivative instrument is not backed by gold on a one-to-one -one basis, the scheme allows an artificial apparent increase of the supply of gold and this leads to a distortion of the price of gold towards a lower level. Adrian Douglas, board member of GATA, has discovered a loophole in the COMEX rules that make it possible um, for gold future contracts to be settled in gold ETFs instead of actual physical gold and the ability to offload futures contract gold obligations to the ETFs essentially allows the gold shorts and the exchanges themselves, which guarantee futures contracts, to transfer their obligations 
to third parties that may not have the metal they claim to have and that in any case are operated by the investment banks running major short positions in gold. So it could well be the case that the meteoric rise of ETFs the last couple of years is in part due to the COMEX settling EFP transactions in ETFs instead of real physical gold. The reason why we don't know for sure this has been the case is that the COMEX publishes this kind of data. When the COMEX would publish uh, specific data um, under the head others volumes you see here on this slide, um, we would know for sure. Unfortunately the COMEX keeps this data to itself. The sixth reason to be skeptical about ETFs is that the COMEX warehouse stores far less physical gold than there is paper gold.